Let's try that again. Look out world, Madam Web the character is young, not blind, and socially awkward. In fact, Madam Web the movie spins such a new take on Cassandra Web and so many other Marvel characters that it probably shouldn't be called Madam Web at all. Separating its characters and their origins from their comic book counterparts, this is a movie that makes basic decisions in dialogue and structure and feels stuck in the year it's set in, 2003. Sometimes that's a good thing, but most times it's, it's very bad. Madam Web is a waste of talent, a weak execution of its clairvoyant hero protects future Spider-Women conceit, and too focused on the family of the friendly neighborhood wall crawler whose web truly connects this scattered cinematic universe. In the Madam Web trailer, Cassie Webb recalls that her mother was studying spiders in the Amazon right before she died. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. While this fact about Constance Webb quickly becomes a copypasta punchline, Cassie actually has a good reason for her to be fixated with it. After all, her mother did die on that trip and she was still pregnant with Cassie. Although Constance dies from childbirth, her daughter survives with the help of Las Arañas, aka Spider People, and their super healing spiders. The incident leaves adult Cassie feeling abandoned, angry, and full of disdain, and she keeps other people at arm's length as a result. Little does she know that the Las Arañas granted her a clairvoyance that will lead her to adopt a litter of other spiderlings who similarly have no web to call home. We get very little background information on Cassie. She's a New York City paramedic who likes American Idol and Chinese food but hates family stuff. Again, abandonment issues. A product of the foster system with no explanation of how she got back to the United States from the Amazon, she claims that she turned out fine. But fine is more like surface level survival with a hard shell, and underneath that hard shell, just a slightly less hard shell. Cassie is a loner with horrendous bedside manner, but outside of the professional settings, Johnson is perfectly cast for the role, in my opinion. She owns Cassie's awkwardness and disinterest in pleasing other characters. I predict that Johnson's delivery of canned retorts and clunky exposition will live on in the minds of the Terminally Online. It's worth noting that studying spiders in the Amazon is the only part of the line that makes it into the final cut, but she was designed for this reluctant mother role. And I mean mother, with a capital M, of course. The tone of Madam Web fits uncomfortably between psychological thriller and coming-of-age road trip dramedy, but the quips and visual humor, like Cassie's attempt to climb walls like every spider hero does, of the latter hamper the former. This is a movie whose plot is driven by a man trying to kill three future spider women in very violent ways. Let's, let's kind of get some perspective here. And as delightful as they try to be with the script that they're given, Sydney Sweeney, Isabel Merced, and Celeste O'Connor are portraying basic mismatched archetypes. Sweeney's Julia Carpenter is meek and worrisome, searching for the same type of support and validation as the character she plays on Euphoria. Merced's Anya is intelligent, discerning, and wary of new people, but she eventually loosens up. And Franklin's Maddie is outspoken, impulsive, and rebellious. These are young women who share with Cassie the experience of being abandoned and forced to take care of themselves, essentially. After each of them retreating inward for so long, they pull together to find some semblance of a family with each other. An emotional arc that I wish were explored more deeply, and from each character's perspective, rather than being shared one by one when the chips are down. Oh, what the hell? She didn't see that coming? That's not how it works. <laughs> it's a depressing motivation, but one that isn't common in superhero movies. And while it's a true bummer, I appreciate the direction of having these girls find fulfillment with each other, even if it's not fully developed yet. Madam Web as a movie could be commenting on how girls are forced to grow up at a young age, while men rebel against this show of maturity with violence and manipulation. But you'd have to search real hard for that. Of course, Madam Web bad guy Ezekiel Sims fits the mold. He wants to murder Julia, Anya, and Maddie. What else is there to say? But we also know he's a bad guy because he has the most generic bad guy everything. Power, wealth, a calculating tech whiz henchwoman, and an extremely stilted and generic villain dialogue, much of which makes Raheem feel like he's talking at his co-stars rather than with them. Because if there's one thing Ezekiel Sims is going to do, it's remind you that he came from nothing. He came from nothing and no one is going to take everything he's worked for away from him. And if there's another thing Ezekiel Sims is going to do, it's not wear any footwear in New York alleys or train stations, which is disturbing and gross on its own. But like every other main character in Madam Web, we only ever get the most baseline information about Ezekiel. 
We don't know what his passions are or his purpose for life, except to just keep living it. He's been cursed with nightmares of his death. But did he become a casually evil dude just to avoid being attacked and killed by Spider-Woman? Does he have any technology or research he's doing to show that he's at least trying to survive or have worth in his life to continue living? If you knew what I knew, you'd do the same thing. Madam Web packs a lot into a nearly two hour runtime when it really, really doesn't need to. It's weirdly paced and picks the wrong things to focus on, like Cassie's coworker Ben Parker and his very pregnant sister-in-law, Mary Parker. The whereabouts of Mary's husband and Ben's brother Richard are vague, but his absence makes him look like a deadbeat father-to-be, which is unintentionally hilarious in a sad way because the movie takes place over the course of maybe three weeks? Like Cassie herself travels to Peru for a week to get answers from Las Arañas and returns in the time that Spider-Man's dad, wherever the hell he is, is gone and still on his own trip? What kind of business is he in? You have a winning personality. I guess I got yours by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> the inclusion of Ben and Mary is shoehorning at its most meaningless. Venom, for example, as a character is inextricably tied to Spider-Man, yet those movies manage to tell stories without him. We don't need spider movies that make the Parkers the Skywalkers of Sony's Spider-Man universe. Madam Web demonstrates that spider people are made in so many different ways, so why try to retroactively rope not Spider-Man himself, but his relatives? A more natural connection to the Spider-Man movie exists in Madam Web's major showdowns set on trains and rooftops, and all of the creative bobbing, weaving, and misdirection such settings require. You can tell that a lot of the effects and sets in these scenes are practical, which is nice and actually does make the movie feel like it takes place in 2003. Positive comment, by the way. The train sequence featured heavily in the trailers is the first time Cassie truly takes action to prevent death after being bombarded with vision after vision as each of the girls enter the train. It's a flurry of vision, real-time vision repeat that disorients both Cassie and the viewer. Get, get up. Get off, get off. Get up. Me? Go. Get off. You're gonna die if you stay here. The depiction of those visions and the mystical realm of Cassie's ever-connecting web is Madam Web's most creative element. Director S.J. Clarkson borrows some stylistic choices from her work on Netflix's Anatomy of a Scandal. Using special lenses and some practical stunts, which seemed a little too abstract for the straightforward legal drama series, that works here to communicate Cassie's clairvoyance, stuttering and slowing down the on-screen action to mimic a stray thought or memory that passes by in the mind. Despite my issues with Madam Web's muddled tone, I can't shake my head too much at a movie that pulls off a vision redo sequence time to Britney Spears' is Toxic. The fact that the scene is punctuated by Cassie crashing a stolen taxi into a diner tickled me. Whatever physical abilities Cassie didn't get from her spider bite, she makes up with her emergency vehicle driving. Her weapon of choice is any motor vehicle, and she will f up your shit. Drive off a second story garage floor? No problem. Get Dakota Johnson in ambulance too, Michael Bay. In many surface level ways, Madam Web feels like Sony's Doctor Strange. An abrasive medical professional gets into an accident that directly or indirectly leads to a higher level of mental clarity, allowing them to see beyond the natural limits of our reality. Both movies have a moment when an astral projection of the protagonist is thrust out of their physical body. They face adversaries on a mental playing field. And at some point they team up with youngsters even though they are definitely not babysitters. However, the approaches for introducing such a character with a complex power set are wildly different. After the all-lady team-up in the Marvels, where our three interlinked heroes work together to face a common enemy, I was hoping for another fun, badass story about women bonding over their abilities and learning how to work together despite their differences. However, Madam Web only gives us the beginnings of how cool and powerful Cassie, Julia, Anya, and Maddie will eventually be. Considering that's more than half of the major characters in this movie, it's a total waste of a story. The girls never suit up in Madam Web, nor even get the powers they're going to get. What was the point of all this? This feels like a sequel story. And while a sequel is less guaranteed from Sony's Spider-Man universe, at least try to tell a story that leaves audiences wanting to learn more, or to see them eventually suit up. You kind of just gave them all of it right now. Madam Web tries to connect many plots and people together to a confusing yet ultimately bland result. It tries to balance the comedic tone of a modern superhero movie with what could be a more interesting psychological thriller if it invested more time on developing its hero and villain, rather than spreading itself thin trying to connect all these new versions of characters together. It fails as both a one-off and a franchise starter, not telling a fulfilling origin story for Cassie, nor giving a compelling argument for the future Spider-Women. The weak dialogue unfortunately stands out, but the few action set pieces hearken to the older Spider-Man movies of the early 2000s. Side note, this is an 
interesting choice for a Valentine's Day release as there isn't even a hint of enemies to lovers between Ezekiel and Cassie, which is what I would have expected from a psychological thriller like this. But it does make for a decent Valentine's Day watch for all the depressed lonely girlies out there. Thanks for watching. For more on Madam Web, make sure to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.